Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com, and I'm really fortunate to be joined right now by... <laughs> Gary Stanford, the new president of the Grain Growers of Canada. So Gary, you are fresh on this job. How long have you been president? Uh, for about two months now. Okay, and you still have all your hair, that's good. Well, I've made a few errors along the way, but we're trying to get it sorted out. Okay, so Gary, for a lot of people that don't understand, maybe you know, some people are probably, or maybe unfamiliar with what the Grain Growers of Canada do or what they're responsible for. What, what, is, what is some of their objectives? Uh, the Grain Growers of Canada has 14 groups across Canada, from BC over to Prince Edward Island, and we work on policy work with the provincial governments and with the federal governments. So if there's any issues that any of our members want, we take it to, down and we should, and we'd meet with the Ag Minister and with Transportation Minister, Finance Minister, and that's our policy work. Okay. So you're, you're really representing farmers from all commodity groups, pretty yeah, much? Yeah, we, we represent uh, all oilseed, canola, uh, pulse, pulse groups, uh, peas, lentils, uh, barley groups, Alberta barley, and then the wheat groups uh, across the country. So I couldn't imagine right now you, you can you go very far without hearing about railways, logistics, yeah. getting this grain moved. Yeah. Uh, what, what sort of things are you trying to do to maybe enable some solutions? Well, we're, uh, we've had meetings today with the railways, we're meeting with the Ag Minister, we're meeting with the Transportation Minister. When you have the biggest crop in history and we got to get it all to ports or through the rail somehow, there's going to be problems, and so we're trying to sort out what can we do in, in the short-term problems to get this grain to the ports, and then what can we do in the long-term problems, because if it's not all moved by the time we do our crop next year, can we keep the railways going full tilt and work with the grain companies to get it to port? Is there short-term solutions, or is it really just about long-term objectives? Well, short-term sol solutions are pretty tough to come by, but we're working with them to see if there is anything we can do but with the cold weather that we're having and with the snow in the mountains, uh, they can only make the trains so long. So what we're trying to figure out is, is could they make the trains longer? Do they have any extra locomotives that they've got to, to move it through? But in reality, we're trying to look at a long-term solution to, to make it better. Do, do the rail, you know, as you mentioned, you, you've met with some of the railway companies. Um, do, are they aware of the, the issue? Like, Because you know, it's easy to say, oh, they don't care. Oh, I know. They know, they know what's going on. Uh, they, they hear all the feedback and, and I told them, I said from a grain growers perspective and from our member groups is, is that we have uh, cash advances, uh, we have uh, operating loans from the banks and we need, to, we need to get the money in and we can't get the money in until we uh, sell our grain. And so we, we, we tell them loud and clear and we tell the minister's offices that uh, this grain has to move. We, we've got to get uh, our grain sold so that we can get our money so that we can start getting ready for next year's crop. Yeah, I've, heard a, I've heard a few farmers here at Farm Tech talk about how, you know, i got to get some grain moved because I need some cash flow. Yeah, cash flow is a big one. And so then when you come to the cash advances, the way it's set up now is if you've got a cash advance until you pay it off, you can't, you can't claim for the, you can't go for the next one. And if the grain's not moving, then what do we do? So that's an issue that we're going to be bringing up with the Ag Minister next week in Ottawa. Yeah, you know, I imagine there's going to be a high demand for short-term loans or bridge financing to get some people yeah. through some of this. Yeah, so I think that people are going to be going to their banks and to their, uh, you know, with their cash advances and to their farm organizations and saying, what are we going to do to alleviate this problem? And I think that we're going to have to just get at it and start working at it right now, not wait till it comes crunch time. Is there any other issue? Uh, you know, I couldn't imagine there's any other issues besides railways right now. <laughs> well, when, yeah, that's the biggest one there is, and so that's what everybody's talking about right now. But no, no, we're, we're working on variety development with wheat. We're working on uh, registration models. We're working with uh, with all, all policy issues that are out there. Neonicotinoids with uh, the bees. I mean, it's, it's endless, I mean, but, uh, you know, the, the hot topic of the day is, is should the oil be in the pipelines or should the oil be on the railways? And so from our point of view, keep it in the pipelines, get the pipelines built and let us, let us have room to move our grain on the rail. Because yeah, it's not as, you know, it's, it's just not as simple as remove the revenue or the revenue cap yeah. and all of our problems will be solved. It's, just, no, it's not and, that simple. And actually we talked about that quite a bit today is, is that if the revenue cap was, was removed, could the train still take more cars? Is, there, is, is it going to be uh, functional for the farmers' inputs? Is it, is it going to be worth its while to remove the revenue cap? So before we even suggest that, we're going to make sure that there's going to be some productivity and the cars moving. Gary, thanks a lot, and congratulations on the new, uh, the new position of President of the Green Growers of Canada. I'm sure you'll do well, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. All right, thanks a lot.